Hello everyone! Thank you so much for coming on my channel, Your Canadian Blind Girl. Stay tuned to see what I have for you today. May 8th is today, but May 8th, two years ago in 2017, was the day that I went to a neural ophthalmologist excited about the appointment because I was thinking I was going to get an answer and a cure for my blindness. And even though I had been going blind for one year before that appointment, um, I had no idea that I would end up this blind, <laughs> like blind blind. And um, it's kind of funny because I was reminded of that appointment from two years ago on Facebook. Thanks Facebook, by the way. And um, it was really weird because it's just a number. It's just a date, it's just a number, but for some reason, you know, that just really made me emotional when I realized it's been two years that I have lived with the knowledge of going blind and not being able to get my sight back. And I think personally, for me, if I knew from the beginning like I had a diagnosis from the beginning and I knew from the beginning that I would not get my sight back. I think it would have been easier for the whole year that I had lived with, with my blind and sight loss. I think it would have been easier because I would not still have that secret small little hope that something would happen. And so sometimes I still have that where I think, you know, well, maybe, maybe because the condition I live with, disrupting the sense of bilateral officer, it's something that affects a very, very small percentage. In fact, I believe in one of the two people worldwide um, that have this. And because we're such a small minority, you know, there's not a lot of studies being done, and there's not a lot of research available, and because of that, you know, that makes it difficult for you know, to come up with solutions and curves. So, I don't know, maybe one day they will have enough research or enough, um, you know, enough things available that they can fix it. But I have learned a lot in those two years. Um, I have learned that looks are not everything. I grew up, I was the only, like, reddish-haired person in my family. My parents didn't have red hair, my siblings didn't have red hair, and I was extremely allergic to the sun as part of my lupus, and so I was extremely white. And I hated it, to be honest. Um, I hated it growing up. I thought my nose was too big. Um, I had a gap in my teeth when I was younger. And so those things kind of bothered me when I was younger and I was around other friends who, you know, they went out in the summer and so they always had like this really nice gorgeous tan. And um, yeah, but over the last two years I've learned that looks are not everything. In fact, looks really are not important. You know, personal hygiene is, and taking care of yourself is, and having a good attitude about yourself and your body is, but to go and, and wish your life to be totally different based just on looks, it's really not that important. I also learned that God was always there for me. Um, sometimes when I was in the middle of something I didn't feel like it, but looking back, I'd be like, oh, that's how you made that work out, okay. I learned that the world is a darker place when you can't see the smiles. Uh, when I could see, you know, you sometimes make eye contact with someone in the grocery store or when you're walking around and, you know, you would smile. And the smile may not have been anything. Like, someone could have smiled to you out of, you know, they, they felt awkward making eye contact with you, so they smiled. And, um, but... Even still, just seeing those little smiles and smiling back made a difference. And um, I also learned that there are good people in the world. Um, I learned that sometimes, you know, there can be a lot of people that are really mean, really hateful, um, who say hurtful things. But there's also good people, and you have to focus on the good people. They always pop up the most when you need them. I've learned the difference between loyal friends and friends that leave you behind and my life is better knowing my loyal friends and letting 
those friend, other friends leave me behind and not trying to keep up and tag along with them. And so there's been a lot of things that I've learned over the last two years. Would I go back and change things? I don't know. I've had a lot of things happen to me in my life. Things a lot of people don't even know. And I don't think I would ever go into the past. Now I don't know if I had the opportunity or like a real choice to go into the past if maybe that answer would change because I know I can't go into the past. But I don't think I would go to the past. And I don't think I would want that option because then that would mean that I had more of a responsibility or more of a control of what circumstances happened around me and I don't think I could live with that because my blindness was not caused by me. It was just something that happened in my life and knowing that I could go in the past and set different things up, well, I could still have the same outcome. I could still end up being blind but then I would feel like I had more of a responsibility that I failed. Um, if I had the choice to get my sight back today, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that would say I would never get my sight back. I would. I would get my sight back. I wouldn't trade what I have learned, and I would not, especially now, because if I hadn't gone blind, I never would have met my fiancé. So, if I had the option of keeping my fiance and getting my sight back, I would keep both. <laughs> I would do both. Um, but yeah, two years, that might not seem like a long time to a lot of people, but to me, those two years were really, really hard. And it's still hard, you know, like I'm trying to figure out with my health, you know, work options. I'm trying to figure out how to still navigate in a sighted world around me. You never become a pro. No matter how adaptable you are, no matter how much you learn, you never become a pro. You always still have to be adapting. You always still have to be learning. And so to all my um, followers out there who are VIPs and blind, don't give up learning and don't give up adapting. It can be hard to keep up trying to adapt, trying to learn new things, trying to move on, trying to keep up with your life. That can be hard and it's tiring and it's exhausting. Even just going out in a new environment is exhausting. But try and keep a chin up, okay? If you haven't reached your two years yet, and actually it's actually been over, like just a little over three years since I had started losing my sight, but it's officially two years that I got the diagnosis that there really wasn't anything that they could do for me. And um, if you haven't reached two years yet, you can. You can make those two years. If you have passed me by reaching beyond two years, I would love for you to comment below for tips for or me or other people who follow of what gets you through those years and what you have learned and the richness of life. Because some people look at my life and think that I have no opportunities. They think that I have no life. They think that I do nothing. They think all these different things. And um, that's not true. My life is very rich. It's very hard. But there's a lot in life that makes my life rich. So beyond finances, beyond external things, there's happiness that can be attained, joy, peace, you know, sometimes that feels like it's really hard to find, especially if you are a blind or visually impaired person. But you can. You just have to stay determined, keep going one foot after the other, and you can do it. So, I hope I was able to share a little bit something of you on my anniversary, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!